Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it's another trying to fix video. Another video where I've bought something faulty off eBay and I'm going to do my best to best to repair it. So, let me show you what's in here. Now, all the Doctor Who fans and pretty much everybody will recognise what this is here. So it's a TARDIS and I think it said it was a money box. So we've got that there. Where you're supposed to put the money in, I'm not too sure. Maybe it's in... Oh, there you go. It's in here. So you put the money in here and then it's supposed to uh, have some lights and sounds and stuff. Let me show you the eBay listing, show you what I paid for it. It was very, very, very cheap. So it was up for four pounds, but it was a best offer. And I thought to myself, okay, well, I'll stick an offer in and see what happens. So I put an offer in for, I think it was two pound 50. Let me just put that there, there you go. So my offer of two pound 50 was accepted. And this is what it says about it. It was three pound postage, so it was five pound, five pound 50 altogether. Right, it says Doctor Who TARDIS money box faulty, not working, spares or repair only. High is eight inches, no lights, stroke sounds. One of the doors will not close. Two of the police box stickers appealing for spares repair only. Right, so hopefully this one might be quite straightforward. I mean, a very honest description that's slightly peeling there and slightly peeling there, but that will be very easy, very easy to fix. So, first things first, let's Unscrew this, see what batteries it takes. Right, so you get your money out via this thing here. Let's see on and off switch, that feels okay. Let's see what it takes. Oh, okay, three AAA batteries. Let me get some of them. It all looks very clean, so there's definitely no leakage there. Right, so I've got my life savings and some batteries. See what this is going to do. I might as well pop this in because this is going to stay in now for a while, isn't it? Right, so that not closing shouldn't be an issue. That's just going to be a problem with one of these catches down here. That's like a kind of bin lid, you know, like a bin lid catch. So you put that in. So that might be fixable because that doesn't look broken here. So I think I'm not too worried about that. All right, so we open it up. Let's drop the money in and it doesn't do anything. Do we have to close the door? There's, it looks like there's some kind of, uh, there's something here on the right hand side. So maybe we have to close, oh, I don't know. Well, well, yes, it definitely doesn't do anything. Yeah, nothing at all. Well, right, let's take the thing apart and see, what, uh, see what's happening. There we go. I'm looking forward to seeing the inside of this. So it just drops in, it doesn't feel like there's any resistance, it doesn't feel like it's kind of hitting anything at all. So, uh, I mean, I hope, I hope it hasn't been apart before, I hope nothing's missing on the inside. I don't think it would be, sort of reading the message and stuff, I don't think, uh, the description, I mean, on eBay, it doesn't sound like, it doesn't sound like it would have been taken apart before. Saying that, I'm looking at these screws, and these screws are not done up all the way, are they? Look. <laughs> so, actually, I think it has been apart before. Hold on a minute, I didn't turn it on, did I? Right, let's turn it on now and see if it does anything. Right, so nothing happens when you push that door in there. Now let's see if it does anything. No. Let's do it at a different angle. No, absolutely nothing at all. Right, let's turn it back off. Right, let's see now. There we go. So that comes off there. Right, so we've got some wires going up from there. We've got a catch here, which doesn't look great. That looks... That looks broken, so that might be part of the problem there. Maybe this catch is to get it... Maybe you have to close the doors for it to make the sound, and that's what this button's for here. So it might be all related to this here. And then the wires go up there, 
to do the sound uh, to do the lights so do you know what it's got nothing to do with the fact of putting money in because if you look it's just a hole it's just a hole up. Ooh, there goes the doors it's just a hole up here yeah when you put your money in money in here so it's got nothing to do with putting the money in it must be purely when you open the doors when you close them again they must make the sound so you put your money in close the doors then they must make the sound so that says to me looking at this i think that this switch is faulty here it definitely looks like it's been smashed so I think it's not recognising, it's not pushing in far enough, it's not turning it on. So let's muck around with this now, let's turn it on here, let's hold this right the way in. No, it's still not doing anything is it? Right, okay, uh, let's take this bit apart here, see if it will all make sense, sense then, because I'm not really sure, not really sure about this at the moment. Let's zoom in a bit more. Oh, okay, we've got a tiny little bit of a circuit board here. So this switch is definitely broken up here. In fact, what does... Oh, no, sorry, this switch doesn't do anything. All this is is purely to keep the door shut. So there you go, you know when it clicks in. Right, so that might not be such a big deal because we might be able to just fix this up. We might be just kind of able to glue this bit up here to get it working. You can probably buy these switches for next to nothing if you know what they're called, but I don't. Yeah, I think what's happening here is, because it's missing the plastic from the ends here, it's, like, if you look at my fingers, now when this goes, when it gets pushed in, this will keep it closed like that, yeah? And then when we open it up again, it opens out to release the doors, but because the outer bits are gone, when it's getting closed in, can you see it's still open? It needs to be closed like that in order to grip the doors. That will probably be fixable with just a bit of tape, maybe not tape, what I might do is I might try to get some plastic to put around here and then put tape around the plastic so when it's like this it will grip the doors and close them. That's going to be fiddly, it will take a bit of time but I think that will be repairable. So now we have to work out why this isn't working, I hope it's nothing to do with this, there must be a tiny little chip under this blob here, I hope it's nothing to do with that, hopefully it's a, a faulty switch here. In fact, if you have a look at the blue wire, look it's been completely crushed. That doesn't mean it's faulty, but I hope there's a break there, and that might be the problem because that needs to be round to the side. Right, let's uh, see where that blue wire goes. So it loops round here and it goes to here, so we should be able to test continuity between here and here. Let's get the meter out. Right, so with my meter, when the leads touch together, it beeps. So let's go across from here to here and see if we've got continuity. Yes, we have. Okay, so just because the wire's crushed there, there's still continuity inside there. Let me see what's happening with these red wires. Could be a faulty switch. Might well be a faulty switch. So now let's see what's happening with this switch here. So we've got two contacts there. So let's go to volts DC. Well, actually, we can just go to continuity for this bit, can't we? And see if there's continuity between here and here. Which there's, which there's not. So now let's turn it on and see if there is continuity. And there's, there's still not. There's still not. So that says to me that the switch itself is faulty. Yeah, I think it's a faulty switch. So if we were to bridge these two here and then press this button here, something should happen. So let's zoom out a little bit. Let's bridge this. And now press it. There we go. And the light. Watch this. Hold on. Take that out again. Ready? Zoom out a bit more. Didn't last for very long though, does it? Oh my god, you can travel in time. <laughs> Do you know what? Let's not spoil it. Let's get it fixed and then uh, and then see what it does at the end. Maybe it's got more than one saying. 
so what am I going to do here now? I'm going to have to undo this here. I need to get open up this switch and try to clean it. Must just have dirty contacts. Here we go. Right, okay, so that's out there now. So what I'm going to do is, if you have a look closely, can you see there's just these little metal tabs and I'll be able to prise them open. You see just here and here, there's four of them. One, two, and two around the other side. I'm just going to open them up and that will allow me to access the switch. And I hope, hopefully, it's just a case of cleaning up the contacts. There we go, that's out there. Okay, I didn't really want that just to fall apart like that. But we've got two contacts here, so they can be easily cleaned. Let's get some tweezers. Right, we've got this thing here, this must just rub. So they're the two contacts here. This thing here must rub against them. I can't even get it. There we go. Yeah, I mean, there's an awful lot of black on there. That might be sort of like uh, a bit of sort of build up. And where's the actual? Here we go. This is the thing here. So we've got a tiny little spring there. And then this is going to go on there, isn't there? So that's going to go in here. Doesn't matter which way it goes round. No, it shouldn't do. Do you know what? I'm going to clean all this up. I think that that's so dirty that it's not making a good contact. That's what I think. Not 100% sure which way it goes back in, but we'll work it out. You can see it's like a cross, so those bits go up into there. But either way, you can see how dirty it is. So so really, that should, that should fix it. So that just moves up and down like that. There's a little spring just to give it enough pressure to keep on the contacts. Right, I'm going to get some IPA. And give that a little scrub. Also, I'm going to clean the contacts here, then put the switch back together. Then we need to try to repair this one here. But right now, I am actually quite hopeful that this is going to be fixable. All right, using some of this. Yeah, you can see there. Actually, before I forget, I'm going to wish somebody a happy birthday. So, somebody is nine today, and that someone is called Aiden, and he is the younger brother of the retro gamer with old consoles who watches and comments on most of my videos. So, I'd like to wish Aiden a happy birthday. I hope you have a lovely day in the UK. It's nice and sunny. So, I hope you get to eat lots of cake and have lots of fun, and it's nice that it's not a school day as well. So, happy birthday, I hope you have a great one, okay? Now let's get on with the cleaning here. So if you look at that now, that's nice and, that's nice and clean, look at that, really is sparkling. Lovely. Now let's do this dirty thing here. Oh, look at that, straight away. Can you see that side's gone now? Look at the black side here, one, one white. Look at that. Completely gone. I thought that would take a lot more scrubbing to get rid of that. Actually, I know which way it goes round now, don't I? Because the black side is going to be against the contacts here. Also, it looks like it's slightly bent. I think I'm going to bend it back a little bit. I think I'm going to make. I think originally this would have been straight. I think that's going to do. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of deoxit on it. Just a tiny little dot. Here you can see how much cleaner that is now. 
fat I'm going to be putting this on it. It's supposed to be very good for contacts. So let's put a dribble on here. And a dribble on here. There we go. You don't need much. Right, okay, let's see if it's working now. So I don't know if this is on or off. Oh, that must be off. Oh no, I've got a broken wire now. I've got a little broken wire here. Right, I've got to solder that back on. There we go. Right. Let's not spoil it. So I'm going to have to get the soldering iron out and I'm going to just have to solder this black wire back onto here because with all the pulling and stuff, it's just broken off. You see this one here? So I just have to solder that. I presume it just goes on with that black wire there. Right, I can put this back together though. Right, rather than get my proper soldering iron out, I'm just going to get my old cheap one out because uh, I only need to tap it on there, so it doesn't need to. I don't need to worry about the temperature. Let that heat up, and then I'm gonna try to get some tape to see if we can work out how to fix this thing here. Really, I need some. I do sort of need some plastic to to go around here. I'm trying to see where the end of it would have been originally. It must have been all the way out here. I'm thinking to the very end there. I'm just going to tin up the wire a tiny bit. Alright, one's on, now one's off. Do you know what, now that I'm used to my other soldering iron, it really is, really is hard work working with a uh, a point so big yet to me years ago this point was really fine and tiny it's amazing how you get used to different things There we go, they're both on now. So now, let's unplug that so I don't burn myself. And let's concentrate on trying to fix up this switch. So what I'm thinking is, I think for the plastic, I'm gonna cut up some of this clear stuff here and use that. And then I'm just gonna put some, uh, you know, sort of uh, gaffer tape or duct tape, or whatever you wanna call it, around it to uh, put it all in together. Right, so just for an example here, I've got the clear stuff. So I'm gonna be kind of like cutting it to size and putting it up to maybe around that height there. I'm not sure, I might have to experiment because I don't really know fully how much these are supposed to stick out. I think I'll do it to there to begin with. It's, I think the most important bit is to do the bits at the side. Then if it's wrong, I might have to undo it and do it again. So this bit, I could be lucky or this bit might take quite some time. kind of what I mean now I might have made it too big to fit back in and also this might be too big here I don't know yet but you can see now that it does definitely pull it in a bit but it still might be too big I'm not going to know until I start putting it back together right now the problem I have is it's not going to fit in between these ones here so I'm going to have to cut away all the tape from the very edges Good thing about that though is it's going to pull this in even more because these are quite tight on here it's going to force it to go in. So I'm not bothered about the, the top, 
I might have to, I think I should be okay on the bottom as well, it's just the sides that I'm going to have to cut away. Right, okay, that is back in and it's fitted quite nicely, but I'm not sure whether it's going to work or not. I'm not going to know that until I put the doors back on. So let's do that right now. Remember, I haven't screwed it up so it's not, uh, it's not together properly, but oh, the doors keep falling out on me. I'm not sure if I have to take more tape out or not, this might be stopping the doors from going fully down, but if you look, they're definitely clicking in now. Perfect. I wasn't expecting to get that first time round. Right, so now it's just going to be a case of screwing it back together and cleaning it all up and sorting out these little police box stickers up the top here. And also I need to, uh, I need to screw the battery thing back on, don't I? Right, so to get these little stickers back down here, I'm going to use double-sided sticky tape. I'm just going to put a tiny bit on the bit that's damaged, and that will hopefully keep it in place. Right, so you can see it's just there, so hopefully now when I push this over, it will stick to it. Here we go, okay. So it's still discoloured. I suppose you could put a bit of marker on that, but I think I'm gonna leave it. I think I'd rather have it uh, honest rather than uh, all coloured in. Right, let's do this little bit here. And I think I'm gonna do this little bit here as well. there the stickers back on so now I'm gonna get a wet wipe and give this all a nice good clean everywhere okay that's it finished so let's get everything cleared away and let's do the final test so here it is all finished and it has come up perfectly clean so apart from the discoloration that you can see so this is the original one here the light the door and here you can see it's really has discolored very badly but that looks more realistic to me that side there looks more realistic than this color here but it's come up really good so I haven't tested it yet so we're going to test it fully now see if it does more than one phrase but check out the doors there you, go. you can see that they now open and close absolutely fine you can hear that click just like the bin lid you know, when you do a bin lid, the catch there sounds exactly the same. So this is it. This is the old police box. You can see the old telephone here. And it looks absolutely perfect. So this is the 10th Doctor. I looked up. It's between, it looks on Wikipedia, it's between 2005 and 2010. The assistant here is Martha Jones. So maybe 11 or 12 years old, that sort of age. Right, let's do a test. So we're going to turn it on. We've got some money down here. So now... Open up the doors. Right, so it says the first bit. So now we put the money in. And now let's close the doors. And the light comes on. Oh, that's pretty good. I mean, if you like Doctor Who, I do like Doctor Who. It's the one thing that I can watch with both my children, and they both like it. Look at that. Did you see that? It fades off. Oh, that's nice, that is. Right. It said something different then. Right, so it says the different phrase 
when it uh, opens and then it does the same thing when it closes. Now, where I think they let themselves down a little bit on this, I think the switch should have been where you put the money in. It should have maybe hit on a little spring tray and then that would hit the switch. Because what you're going to do, what kids are going to do, is they're just going to constantly open and close the door to get the different phrases. Saying that, it's not going to take a genius just to undo that, take the money out and put the same money in and out. But I think it would have been nicer to have it saying it when you put the money in. Right, okay. So it does say quite a few different things. But there you go, that is it. I think for £5.50, that is well worth it. And yes, it was a very easy fix, but it was still a fix. We had two brakes on it. We had the fact that the switch wasn't working. That's the reason why it didn't work at all. And the door was loose because the catch was broken down there. So yeah, not the most challenging, not the most challenging at all, but still a very honest, real life fix. This is the sort of thing where you would have at home, it doesn't work and it doesn't very really take very long you know half an hour of your time you can fix it up and it's the satisfaction of getting it working again it really is a good feeling so that is it for this video if you liked it please subscribe for more how-to videos and uh, also give it a thumbs up so i'll let that just uh, play as the video ends take care bye now